in school they teach you marjorie what did they teach you about money nothing in school what did they tell you about money then they tell you just to work yeah well sleep. they tell you that you've got work and you know you've got work if you don't work then you won't have anything in life and i think you not even school told you that as well even your parents said that as well yeah. so that is what everybody's expected to do really yeah. And in terms of aspirations, what were you working for? I mean, I wanted the car and at 17, I had my car. What was your thing? I wanted to drive. I wanted to have a car. As soon as I left school, you know, I just did driving lessons and that. I wanted to drive. I always wanted to drive. And then after that, I wanted to go on holidays. I think I really wanted to like travel mm -hmm. and that, you know, I really wanted to be a, a hair roastist really, you know. But they said I was too short. So, yes, there is a limitation. So, so, so I decided that I would just um, travel. Okay. So, you know, I've been traveling. You know, I still travel now. <clears throat> and um, what else was it? Um, a house. I wanted to own my own house. So those are the, the dreams and aspirations that I had. So, and here's the thing. Most people, we are geared towards having things nice clothes, lifestyle, experiences, all the things that the society says that makes you be um, successful. Now, our reality is that 80% of people out there run out of money before the end of the month. Fact. The system is geared to keep you in permanent debt. So most of us have an overdraft facility, which is wonderful, absolutely beautiful. But the reality is, is that being in that debt, using the bank's money as part of your money means that you never get out of debt. Yes, I think we're all guilty We've been on of that. that. Yeah. yeah now, rest assured, you know, the national level in terms of debt in a household is over £15,000 per household in terms Ooh. of debt. And that's without mortgage. Wow. That's in the UK. So if you've gone above that, at least you know where you are. And if you're below that, you know where you are. But the rich people, don't have debt. What they do is they leverage their assets. So I'm going to share with you some hints and tips. Okay. Now, tell, tell me, in terms of your wages, yeah. how do you break down? How do you budget? Um, you pay the main bills first. <clears throat> I, I have a partner. Okay. Yeah. I have a savings. Yes. Yeah. So that's the first thing that comes up for me right. is my savings. Perfect. My partner. First thing. Yeah. Good. And then after that, it's the bills. Mm -hmm. And then after the bills, it's the food. Mm -hmm. And then whatever's left is the clothes. Okay. And it's interesting that you've kind of gone in that order. Now, what you did was great. But people out there, there is a formula. There's a formula for success and it works like this. The first 50% of your earnings should cover essential living. Essential living, that's basic transport, house, bills, basic clothing and insurance. That's basic because you need a level of protection. Your 20% should be your savings and ideally you want to put that into a separate account so you don't see it. And we're going to talk about that a little bit later in terms of savings and 30 percent is the things you want the things that give you the motivation your entertainment your sky your car and your non-essential shopping but you really should break it down from a net position how much money goes in your bank and divide it up in those percentages so to recap it is 20 percent savings first off out of your main account 50% against your core living costs, including your rent or your mortgage and basic overheads. And the other 30% is where you work. Yeah. Now, mm -hmm. it might feel impossible, but if you're already living in your overdraft, then you're already down. And this is why you've got to change the mindset to start from a position of zero. But anyway, let's move through. Now, your car, Marjorie. Mm hmm. You do an MOT every year, correct? Well, I get new cars. You get new cars, okay. <laughs> I get new and cars, so car. I don't MOT for three years. So you, but, but you get the gist. You look after your car. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And you look after your health, your physical health. Yeah. When was the last time you did a financial health check? Do you know what it is? No. 
What's that? Ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> one of the it? things that you should be doing is that in the same way you manage your home, your personal health, you need to look after your financial health check. You need to know what the system understands about you. So the first thing is that you would log on to an Experian or a credit or clear score, and they will tell you what the system sees in you. Now, what these systems say is that based on your level of credit card debt, um, personal debt, how you manage your money, if you're late paying, there is a level, a score that's assigned to you. And if you have a score of more than 420 and 700, which is the top, you are a good liability. If your score is below that, wow. if your score is below that 420, you are a risk, which means you're less likely to get any kind of borrowings. How scary oh. is that? Yeah, so you oh. are but a number in the prospect. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so you need to know exactly where your credit score is. Okay. Yeah, now the rich people, they work on a base of assets and liabilities. Now, if you were to tot up and count up the value of all of your assets, everything you own, what would that be worth? What would that be worth? Don't think about what you paid for it. What's mm. it actually worth now? If you had to sell it, whether that be your jewelry or your clothes, mm. it will help you put in your perspective about values. Yeah. Yeah? Yeah. You can't really think about things like that, do you, really? No. We're conditioned to spend, which yeah. comes on to my next thing. In terms of debt, loans, credit cards, personal friend debt, do we know what those are? Do we keep a tab on them? Yeah, yeah, I keep a tab on my credit card. Yeah. How many cards do you have? Three. Yeah, that's the average. So you're on you're on point. Oh, she right. has the average. The average <laughs> is three credit cards per person. But there are certain credit cards that will give you a better credit rating. And you've got to look at the interest rates that you're being charged on those same credit cards. So a credit card like NBNA, which advertise a lot, they will charge something circa 29 to 32% interest. Oh, okay. Compared to a Virgin credit card, will charge you 22. Two. Mm. Yeah. But that's still borrowing money and being charged an excessive amount compound. And we'll look at that a little later. But the key thing is you need to know your net worth. Your net worth is your assets minus your liabilities, minus your debt. Mm. And if you're not in a positive position, that's something that you guys need to work on and either have a look at your sources of income or have a look at how you can cut back on your spending. Yeah, number one thing. So you've now got to start budgeting like a professional. You've got to monitor every penny. You've got to use your cash and see exactly where you're spending. Ask yourself, do I really need it or do I just want it? I always want it. <laughs> And that's the thing. I always want yeah. it. I'm like, we, you know, mm, I'm guilty. I really want that. Guilty as charged. I see things. I'm like, yeah, I really want it. Yeah. I really want it. Yeah. But it comes to a point in time you can spend a pound, but once, but once, and once you spent it, you can't get it back. Because, Mark, you've been to the store and you take something back, and they say sorry. They have to give you credit, credit um, a, 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 a note or something, some credit note. Exactly. So it comes down to it. You need to review how you spend, what's important, yeah. what's urgent, what's essential. Do yeah. you really need it or do you just want it? That's yeah. a bit difficult. That's kind of like you always toying with yourself. You look at it and you think, oh, but I need that. And then you think, oh, I don't need it. Then you think I might as well just get, get it because I might not see it at this price again. But do you That's need That's me. It? Yeah. Now, That's what I do. Now, talking about loans, have a look and be really clear about how much interest you're being charged. So you need to focus to clear the cards that have the highest interest rate, number one. Number two, you also need to manage it in a way that you can overpay. Try and avoid paying the minimum. Because when you pay the minimums, you will ultimately be paying it over a number of years. And you will sometimes pay back three slash four times the amount you originally borrowed. So in other words, you need to keep in touch with every penny that you have spent and every liability that you have. Mm -hmm. Now, money motivation. Money motivation. How do, you how do you manage that for you? What do you, how do you focus on your vision? What's your vision? 
Well, I have a vision board. Yeah. I have a vision board of all the things that I want to do. And I just tell myself, I motivate my own self. And I say, right, I don't do things that I think might be out of my reach. Yeah. Out of, you know, I say, okay, I want to get a car or I want to do, you know, small things that are achieve achievable. And so, but I have a vision board. I have a board that I have, that I use on a regular basis. I look at and I visualise and I think, this is what I want. That's what I personally do. I don't know if other people do it, but that's what I do. Most successful people do. Most successful people create a vision board and it's visual. So they cut out the images and they put it on a board and they look at it every day, morning, noon and night to remind themselves what they're working for. And yeah. that's so important. The other thing when you do a vision board is to make sure you put a date. Even if you have to, have to move the date, yeah. if it is May 21, 2021, put a date on it and also put a value on it. So from a financial point of view, which is what this exercise is about, you know what it's going to cost you. So there's no point saying you want to buy yourself a new Aston Martin car. If you know it's not. Because you're going to, insurance is going to kill you, number one. But you can say you want a new car. Yeah. And you do the you research, you do the test drive, and you can see what is viable, what is reasonable, and how to grow. And you have a five to ten year plan with some short, medium, and long term goals. And that's what life's about giving yourself a purpose on your journey. So make sure you make bite sized goals. That way you can manage them and treat yourself. So as you clear a debt, you treat yourself. You clear a debt, you treat yourself. All part of your process. When you say treat yourself, what do you mean treat yourself like with what? So you could say, I'm like, going to treat myself like a long weekend. Or Let's a holiday go, or, or something. Or a holiday. Okay. So it's, you know, reward. Okay. You're going to reward yourself for doing well, for actually budgeting and doing something constructive. Treat yourself. Look after yourself and work, just treat yourself. Work hard, play hard. Very important to balance. Work hard, play hard. I've been blessed, I'm fortunate, I've covered, what, 49 cities all over the world, cruised 11 times. I love my life. Wow. But I wow. budget. Wow. <laughs> I budget, I focus, and I build. And it all starts from a foundation. Now, one of the things that can be really detrimental in any financial situation is self-talk. So I would encourage you to cut the toxic talk. You know that one, right? I always tell you guys about that, don't I? Yeah. Well, I said, mm. listen, you know, don't listen to people that are going to be negative around you because that's toxic and you've got to take yourself away. That's what I always tell them. And now you're yeah. coming and you're telling them the same thing. See? Yeah, absolutely right. And it boils down to whether you think you will or whether you think you won't, you are right. So if you tell yourself, wow, this debt is extreme, wow, I can't cope, wow, I won't get out of this, I can't see my way out, you never will. Never. You never will. And you have to get yourself in the mindset. And this is where things like YouTube, whether it be Oprah, and recondition the mind. You've got to change your lifestyle and your mindset. mindset. Yeah, and you're talking decades of change yeah. for positive. And you've yeah. got to align yourself with those that have already done it. So yeah. whether they be uber successful or even moderately so, you've got to know what your game plan is and focus. Yeah. Have the plan, create the plan, and somehow things tend to work out. Yeah. And if it has the case that you have to re-educate and boost your income, have that second job, but get yourself in a positive position financially for you to have the freedom and the lifestyle you want, it's definitely going to be worth the sacrifice. Yeah. Now, if you need to, get a money buddy. A money buddy. What's Ladies a and gentlemen, a money buddy. That is somebody who understands your position and respects you that you are accountable to. So you then say, guess what? And you support each other. And this is where teamwork comes in. You support each other. You say, you know what? I have got £2,000 worth of debt. However, my income is only X. And you then sit down, you look at the budget and say, well, I don't need to pay this. And I can streamline my Sky. I don't need to pay for Sky Sports. Sky Sports, you know how much extra people are paying to watch Sky Sports? Some people just love sports, yeah. though. 
somehow you can cut that down over three months, that's 100 pounds, that goes towards a debt, that's a liability, that's a saving as opposed to you living in your overdraft. Think about what's really necessary and how you can cut things back. Going out maybe once every other week as opposed to every week will you know, give you a saving. Yeah. So have a look at that. But your money buddy will help you keep you on track. Yeah? Right. And you do the same. And you say, we're going to save and we're going to put it into account and you have the evidence and you support each other. And even if it's a case that you have a shared vision, you say, once we've cleared this debt, then we will then go on this holiday or we're going to go to this restaurant or we're going to do something to reward ourselves as part of the process. So it's rewarding yourself it's all the time. Right. Work hard, play hard. But you have yeah. to work hard first and you have to be financially free in an ideal world. Now, debt. Debt is something that impacts most people. And it's something that most people, it's actually a secret. Gambling, debt, not managing money is a huge problem because we're not taught how to manage money from school. No, we wasn't. I wasn't. They never really spoke about money at all to be quite honest mm. and mm. if you remember those days when the credit cards came in and the adverts came up and it said your flexible friend your flexible friend have yeah. it now pay for it later yeah. you remember that act yeah. as your flexible friend and the system encourages us to be in permanent debt which means we are per permanent slaves to the system if you think about it mm. We are. Everything we Once do you get into is that, linked. Into that link, you, it's really hard to get out of it. It's like a vicious circle, isn't it? It is a very much a vicious circle. So yeah. no matter what your debts are, you have to face them. If you've got to the stage where you're getting the letters, you need to open those envelopes. You need to call those people and you need to kind of talk to them. And if it's only £10, you've got to say, do you know what, guys, right at this point in time, it's only £10 I can afford to pay. But you've got to control the debt. You've got to manage the budget. And be aware that if you are saying that things are bad financially, but on Facebook, you've got yourself out in Marbella on holiday spending money, they will catch up with you. So be careful of what you, know you do. What? You know what it is, Sam, Pauline? I think... The way people see things is that bills and debts are always going to be there. Correct. It's always going to be there. So why not go on that holiday that you've always wanted to go on? Because when you come back, the bill's still going to be there. There is that. And it's that instant gratification that feels good. But the thing is that you've come back and you have a larger debt. Mm -hmm. And then it makes it really uncomfortable. Then what you're in is a spiral. Then you go through a mindset of avoidance. And then you borrow you rob from Peter to pay Paul. And that's what you've got to get to. You've got to get to the situation where you are self-sufficient within your own financial limitations. Mm. Ambition is key, but find a way to generate more rather than rob Peter to pay Paul, which comes on to my other thing. And I've been caught out. Guarantor. I've been asked to be a guarantor mm, so for someone I. to buy something so with a good heart. With a good heart. So have I. I, a friend of mine, um, asked me to... She was a guarantor for her husband. Mm. She took out a loan for her husband, for her husband to get a car. And the husband was paying really well at first. Mm. And then after about six months, he stopped paying. He said, oh, could you pay for me this month? Because I've got something else to pay for. And so it went on. And then she started paying and... And then she got into debt. And then she came and she asked me mm. if I could help her to pay. Mm. And I was helping the person to pay. And I got myself into debt yeah. over it. And this is the thing. Sometimes we do things with good intention. There's a basic rule that I work to. If I can't afford to lose it, I don't lend it. So I encourage you, if you're going to be lending money, think to yourself, if I can afford to lose it, here you go. If I can afford to lose it, here you go. If I can't, don't lend it. Yeah. Because it damages friendships. Yeah. And the only person that pays is you. So being a guarantor for any situation that you are not the primary beneficiary, you will be liable if that person doesn't pay. 
So if they don't have that credit rating to do it by themselves, don't let them sit on yours because that will damage you long term. Mm. Yeah? So you kind of got to think on that. I'm going to give you another formula, ladies and gents. 28%. Your core rent or mortgage shouldn't exceed more than 28% of your total net income, not your gross, your net income, in order for you to balance a good quality of life. 28%. Yeah, mm -hmm. as hard as it is. So if you are netting, if you net £3,000 in your bank and you're on your own, then your your rent or your mortgage shouldn't exceed more than £1,000. Otherwise, at times you're going to struggle. And this is the thing. We don't want to struggle. So manage your money, manage the circumstances that kind of impact you. Shopping, Marjorie. Don't you love to shop? I'm always shopping. I shop almost every week. Yeah. <laughs> I ain't got no money though, but I shop though. Yeah. Credit card. Dangerous. Mm. Dangerous. Now, so it gives us an endorphin rush when we go shopping. That adrenaline says we feel good. But when we spend money that really should be spent doing other things, then it doesn't feel so good. You had that one, right? Yeah, I have. I have. Yeah? Yeah. So, true. so one of my rules is, and I, actually, let me ask you. Who do you go shopping with? I know you shop every week. Who do you go shopping with? Sometimes I go with friends. Yeah. I go with friends. and But I've started to go by myself. Yeah. Because when I go with my friends, and you lot are out there, you know who you are, I spend more money. Mm. And I've said, no, if I go by myself, right, I can only, I haven't got no one to really talk to about it. Or no one to say, oh, that one looks really nice. It's really good for the money, you know. You should get that. Mm, trap. <laughs> so, so, and this is my rule number five. Number five is shop smart. You fix your budget, go solo. If you go solo, you tend to make a more rational decision. And you'll look and think, do I really need it? Or do I just want it? And because there's no one there to encourage you, you don't end up buying a dress. You probably have something similar for in the wardrobe, right? Mm, I've done that so many times. You come back and you think, I've got a dress like this. No wonder I like it. But you didn't need that dress. It's down to needs and wants. Yeah. It's easier to dress up a, an outfit with some jewellery or just change a, a cut or something with it rather than buy another dress. No one is watching. The only thing they watch is if you don't smell right. So the only thing is you've got to make sure is your clothes but are clean. But people do watch people's clothes because of social media now and everything. People watch people. They, they watch what you wear, you know. Yeah. If you wear something over and over or you've worn it like, I'm not saying that you're going to wear it every week in a row. Mm. But if you even say, okay, you want to wear it once every six weeks or something, people are going to know. And people so what? Know. It's yours. I know it's. I and know. if you've got but debt, but, it, it, but yeah, I know. I right. know. So that's you, why. That's oh, why I got debt. Right. So if you've got debt, and you keep on spending to present yourself to the people out there who've got no debt or you don't know their level of debt, then who's the smart one? Mm. Think about how you're going to spend the money. I, yeah. I think I need to go to some um, get some counselling for shopping. <laughs> Leslie Ann and Janet, you guys out there. She needs could, counseling. Can you counsel me, please? She needs counseling. From the counsellor yeah. to the next counsellor. Yeah. Could I get some counseling for shopping? Because I have a shopping problem. Yeah. And it is addictive. And you do get the endorphin rush. And it does feel good in the moment. But it doesn't feel good in the pocket when you've got other bills and debts and liabilities that are coming up and you don't have anything for the emergency. Yeah. Then you have to beg and borrow from a friend. Yeah? Yeah. So I'm going to kind of repeat again. Avoid the overdraft and try and manage your money. So my number, number six, hint number six, retirement. Retirement, retirement. What does retirement mean to you, Marjorie? Well, it means quite a lot to me, actually, because I've just retired. Ooh. I've just taken early retirement. <laughs> I'm so happy. I'm so glad for myself. Yeah. 
I am glad because I have worked for a very long time and I just feel that it's time for me to start doing what I want to do for myself. Mm. Um, you know, it, was, it wasn't an easy decision, but, uh, you know, I just feel that I paid in a lot. I've paid in a lot of money over the years for my pension. Mm. And I just felt that I just wanted to get some of my pension before I die. Now, here's the thing, ladies and gents out there. Retirement is something that's perceived that you're going to need when you're old. The UK system now, unless you prepare for your retirement your way, you are going to be working to potentially 70 years old. 70 years old. And here's the thing, in terms of the state pension, you will get the princely sum of £175 and 20p per week but only if you've paid 35 years of national insurance contributions. I'm going to repeat, if you've worked for 35 years and paid national insurance, only then, and only then will you get the maximum amount of £175, 20p per week. From the government. From the government. That's, That's your pension. That's what you're going to have to survive on. Jesus. Yeah. Now, oh if, if you're fortunate enough to have a company pension scheme or a private pension scheme, you have more flexibility. And this is where I'll encourage the youngsters to take control. So rather than buy that wild new clothing or suits, try mm, and save in a way to make sure that you can retire your way. So here's the thing. You can retire from the age of 55, 55 years old and get a tax-free allowance of 25% of everything that you have accrued in your private or your personal pension plan. No other system allows you to do that. It means you can work part-time from that age and actually have a good quality of life. But it's having that plan from when you're in your 30s. For us and those of us in our 50s and 60s, we're kind of stuck and now we're trying to compensate and think about what kind of life are we actually going to have? Because £175 a week isn't real money. It's not going to go very far. I'll buy nothing with that. What can you yeah. do with that? Yeah, but that's what you're limited to. So at least once you know what the option is, then you can prepare yourself and build yourself a nest egg that says, I need to achieve at least £1,500 a month so at least I can have the lifestyle that I want. You've got to plan ahead start saving now there's a tax relief for pension plans and if you want information i can signpost you but it's something you can start when you're early because it's something that compounds over time and even if god forbid you don't you actually pass before you retire it's a nest egg for the family you leave behind so it's your children or your spouse so it gives them that extra financial cushion yeah so think about it you can either save now retire your way from the age of 55 or you can keep on doing juggling pay your 35 years national insurance and you'll be welcome to 175 pounds a week think about it yeah now most people are not aware of their credit position understand your credit rating so i'm going to repeat again get onto credit score get onto experience understand where you are financially what you can borrow. If you're looking to get a mortgage, understand you're gonna be needing to get something in the region of 10%, but don't forget you're gonna to have to have your legal fees, you're gonna to have to have stamp duty, even though there's a holiday up until March, 2021. So be aware in the news in terms of how and where things that you can take advantage of, because there's ways of still making and juggling money, but all depends on your credit rating. You have a poor credit rating, you're less likely to be able to benefit from a lot of the deals that are out there yeah mm. yeah talking about credit card applications ladies and gents if you find yourself applying for a credit card and you are rejected avoid making a second application and a third it damages your reputation damages it to the point whereby people will not lend to you so if rejected number one understand and have a look as to the reason why build your credit rating leave it a couple of months if you can and then go back. Ideally, three months difference will clear what was up there. And if you've got credit card debt, try and reduce those down to improve your rating and your position. Yeah. 
And if you can't get any credit card at all, but you've got some cash, get what they call as a prepaid credit card, because that will work to help build your credit rating. You put some card, cash on the card, you spend on the card, and then you clear it because you only spend what you have. Yeah. Yeah? Mm -hmm. But it shows you can manage money. So no matter what, you need to do that. Get your name on an electoral roll, get yourself on a name on a bill. Again, that helps to build your credit reputation. And that's what everything's about. It's all about credit, re um, credit reputation. But keep your eye on your credit rating. Understand that if... Someone, so so do you can you, do you have to like check it how often do you check your credit rating do you check it like once a year so every six months or how do you know how do you know when to check? i would check mine normally every other month oh and, and i've set it as up as quick as that yeah. i thought you'd have to be like six months or no. once a year or something you can check it right now on credit score and they'll tell you exactly where you are and it'll also show you how to improve your credit rating yeah. The other thing is what it will do if you set it up is if someone goes into your account, i.e. fraud, it will alert you. It will let you know literally as soon as that problem has occurred so you can do something about it. There's nothing worse than going to your account and saying, where's your money gone? Mm. Yeah. You need to be on top of the game. Yeah. Number eight, get protection for yourself, your family and also your parents for those with elderly parents. Sometimes we kind of live in this place of secrecy. Yeah, I don't want them to know. Yeah, you've got to think of what if. What if, you know, you have to care for somebody who has cancer? What if you are that one in four that's suffering? What if you don't have the income from your job? How are you going to survive financially? There are certain products that you can put in place and that could be critical illness. They all cost. But it's just in case mm. because we don't know what's around the corner. Income protection, just in case. Life policy, just in case. Well, life policy isn't just in case. That's a case of when, because at some point we're all going to pass. Yeah. Yeah. So let's put together certain bits and pieces that are there for our family to make sure that they have a peace of mind. Yeah. So going to come back again. Make saving as part of your monthly habit. 20% straight away, different account, don't touch it. Think about your essentials, yeah? Even go to the partner that Marjorie mentioned as a method if you're not used to it. Yeah. Yeah, to get yourself in that habit. I've been doing a partner since I was 16, actually. Yeah. I have had, there has been people that have run off with money and that, but it's not um, really deterred me because I find that it's a good way for me to save um because i do try to do the other way but sometimes it doesn't always work because every time there's always an emergency yeah yeah so i'm always um dipping into that that pot mm. but with a partner for me i can't dip into it so it until works for me until it's your draw until it's your draw then you can't touch it so you know it doesn't matter what's happening mm. unless it's some a death and then you have to go to the partner person and say look I've had a death, I really need an emergency draw, and then they have to try and juggle it and see if they can give it to you. But apart from that, no. No. Now, once you can get into that habit, you want to try and achieve, and here's the number, a minimum of three months worth of money to cover all your bills and overheads. So in the event that you not, don't have an income, at least then you know you can do that without having to worry. After which time, you can pick up and do whatever needs to be done. Yeah? Mm -hmm. so number nine one of the things we're not very good at is sharing knowledge we need to encourage our peers our friends our young people to save emergencies are always around the corner whether that be a travel emergency a home emergency a loss of job emergency helping out a friend emergency you've got to have something in place you can't spend what you haven't got and there's no point putting on a credit card to accrue more debt on something that isn't going to increase in value. So it's about appropriate investments. So you get your extra savings, you've got inheritance, you've got to look at ways how to make money work hard for you. Organize your paperwork, be clear about what you have and where it is and what you need to do. Have a plan, whether it be your student loan, or personal loan, your credit card, your car loan. Understand that 
with your car loan, you are investing in something that's depreciating in value over time. Do you really need to be a drive in that? Is it necessary? Can you suffice without it for six months in order to become debt free? Yeah. It's a sacrifice, but sometimes life's like that. And if those of you've got children, make sure you've got a legacy plan in terms of how you're going to support your children because they're expensive, you know, and they and they need more. And we want to support one. We want to do more for them than we than we got as children. So as parents, we tend to have a different attitude. But part of that is teaching them how to save and to be self-sufficient. So what I want to do is kind of leave you with a little statement in terms of what money can buy. It's all about the money. Money can buy a bed, but not sleep. Can buy a computer, but not brain. Food, but not appetite. Finery, but not beauty. A house, but not a home. Medicine, but not health. Luxuries, but no culture. Amusements, but not happiness. Acquaintances, but not true friends. Obedience, but not faithfulness. Sex, but not love. It's very important that you understand what you're doing. Your choice is down to you. So from me, I'm Auntie P. If you find this useful, please like us on Instagram and Facebook. Um, we're going to put up a little note. If you want some guidance in terms of whether it be financial, whether it be estate planning, wills, trust, probate, funeral plan, power of attorney, mortgages, I can signpost you. I can signpost you so you can get some free advice and an insight into life. So that's me, Auntie P. Well, was that not informative? Well, thank you so much, Pauline, for coming. I'm sure everyone was glued like this listening like I was as well. Like, wow, there's so much information that came out that I didn't even know about. And um, if you guys want to get more information, um, just log on to the, my page and um, we'll have everything on there, what you need and contact details, email address and stuff to email Pauline. Pauline, um, you know, she'll let you know what you can do from what you can't do. And yeah, um, I thought that was really, really good. Thank you, Pauline. Thank you so much for coming on the show. You're welcome. And um, no doubt, I know that you guys got lots from it. And there's more. If you need more information, as I said, there'll be contact details. I didn't get any messages today. I don't know. Facebook was cutting out today and I haven't seen any messages from anyone, neither um, Instagram or Facebook. I'm not sure what's going on, um, but I will look at the show after and we will answer any questions, you know, answer any questions that you may have. Um, yeah, so that's it. So I think that's it for tonight. I'm on again on Sunday as a roundup of, you know, what we really spoke about today and putting my spin on, you know, what we spoke about today. So I hope that you guys have a wonderful, wonderful week and I will see you guys on Sunday, Sunday at 5.30. Love you guys. Bye. Hug up. <laughs> Kisses. Thank you guys for tuning in. Thank you. I speak to you guys or see you guys on Sunday. Have a wonderful evening and have a wonderful rest of the week. Bye. Bye. See you guys. Bye Instagram. Bye Facebook. See you guys. Take care.